Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to be talking about hunting in the rain. Uh, it was raining earlier today. It's not raining now. It gave me the idea to do this, but I actually was going to do it in the rain, but then realized I can't have the cameras and the laptop and the stuff out here in the rain while I was doing it. So we are faking it. But there are some things we need to take into consideration when you're hunting from a tree stand in the rain for safety purposes. We're going to give you some tips and suggestions, and then I'm also going to show you uh, some examples of how to hunt correctly in there and not let it be an issue because of rain washing blood trails out. So it's going to be a very in-depth, detailed video that we're going to cover today. First of all, well, I'm in this clothes because it is 88 degrees out and I am wearing this rain jacket. I'm not wearing it for long, so we're going to cover some of this stuff to begin with. You also notice you might be able to hear it a little bit, okay? Rain gear is very loud when it's dry. When it's wet, it's dead quiet. It doesn't make any noise. So if this was wet, it would be quiet. So I wear it when I'm wet and I'm gonna be wet and that's the issue. As soon as it stops raining, when I'm in a tree stand and I'm up there, I wear this over top of my harnesses and that kind of stuff. And when it stops raining, this jacket will come off because it's, I don't want this dry. If this is dry like this, listen to how loud it is. So, you know, the reason I'm, I'll show you, but the reason I say that is if you're in it and you're just sitting in your stand like this waiting and it stops raining, you're like, oh, finally it cleared up. If your rain gear dries and then you got to move to shoot an animal, you're not going to realize that it makes so much more noise when it's dry and you could be busted for that. So you're up there and listen to how quiet or how loud it is when it's dry. Okay. You can hear that anywhere it rubs on itself. It can be noisy, not horrible. You're not up there doing this, okay, where it's loud, but it does make noise. If I come in closer, you can hear that. You gotta be careful if you're wearing it dry. Okay, you can hear that rain gear a little bit. Is it gonna spook animals? I don't believe it's gonna, not necessarily, but it is something to be aware of. So me personally, when it gets dry, this comes off. Now, when it's wet and you're heading out there, there are some clothing issues that are going to be a problem for you that you're probably not used to and aware of. One of them, whether you're wearing a hat like I do, I love these outdoor research uh, sombrero hats. They're huge, they're wide rimmed, they, I can shoot with them and even when my string hits they just fold. Real, They're very, very soft and flexible so they're very easy for my string to just pop it out of the way when I draw. It just folds right back like that and I can shoot or they're velcro so I can pop a side up like this if I want to so that when I shoot, but I, I love these hats. I know people are like, oh my God, every animal in the world is gonna see that. I've killed about, I don't know, maybe 25 deer with this hat on and probably uh, four pigs now with this hat on and uh, you know, in different colors of this, but you know, but this is one of them that I wear and I, I love this hat. It keeps me bone dry and I don't have to wear a hood. I am not a fan of a hood. I do not like a hood at all. They block my hearing and I cannot see, I, I don't like that I can't, I, and I don't want them snugged in. I can't stand a hood. Hoods are the worst thing. So for me, these outdoor research hats, that's my go-to. Choose what you want, but doesn't matter if you're wearing a hat or a hood, it's the same issue you're gonna have. When you got your covered up and you're gonna be trying to see as you go up and down a tree, that hat can get in your way as well as the hood can too. You may have your hood on and you might even cinch it down and have it all tightened up and all that kind of stuff. But still, as you go to move that hood, can get in your way and not let you see very well out of that. That is a concern that you have to take into account, all right, that that can be an issue for you for vision as you're going up and down that tree. So you wanna be careful of that. The other one you gotta watch out for is that the coat is going to be over your harness, all right? You do not want your harness over your raincoat because if it stops raining on you, it is now going to be dry and if it's dry, you're getting too much noise factor. I know some of you guys, well, that's why I wear this rain gear. Do what you want to, whatever you want. Just know that I prefer to wear my rain gear over my harnesses, okay? Whether it's a shoulder strap harness, I bring the shoulder strap, the safety tether right out of the back, let it hang there. Um, but to get to my lineman belt loops to climb, they are tucked in here underneath my jackets where my lineman belt loops are. I need to take care of that and be, be cogsig it. I need to know where they are and how they are because trying to connect to them if I don't pre-prep that can be tough. If I start climbing on this stick and I go to take my lineman belt and throw it and I just disconnect this and go to throw it around, I don't. I, I got nowhere to hook up to and then I'm fighting and I'm trying to fight to get this 
So you want to prep that first. So before I climb, before I'm ready to go up, as I'm doing it, it, when it's raining, I will take my jacket and I will fold it up like this. Okay, so it's out of the way of my harness. That way I have good, complete access to my harness. Will this fill up with a little water? Depends on how long and how slow it is that you climb a tree. For me, it's never been an issue. And once I get up there and I'm set, I do dump any water that's in there out just like that. But while I'm climbing, I will fold that up out of the way. So it's completely out of the way, giving me access to take, we'll put it on this tree here. Well, yeah, you can see it here still. But gives me access here to be able to connect my lineman belt without having my coat in the way and without trying to do this, which is fish it and fight my way under there and try and get it and get connected in. That's just an accident waiting to happen and I don't get that solid hookup. Get that jacket out of the way of your harness when you are climbing so that you are 100% safe, mandatory, okay? Give yourself that option. Once you're up there and set, drop that coat down when you have your lineman belt off if you want to. That's completely your call. But that is a clothing issue that you can definitely run into. Um, we're gonna set this right over here with my hat. Um, that's a clothing issue that you got to be concerned with when you're up there uh, with the rain gear. Um, also, make sure as you're walking in and out, if you are heading through the woods, I'm hoping glare is not too bad on that camera because I see the sun hitting it. I think we're okay. Might be a little bit, but we're going to run it. Um, but uh, you want to make sure that you are not going to overheat. I am all buttoned up in this and sealed up tight, and then you got your hat on and your whole deal, and you're out there and you're working it and you're heading out there, you got your pack and your stand. You're going to get hot. Make sure that you thermal regulate. There may be times out there on the way out there, especially when I'm in the in in the hills in Missouri, Kansas, and I'm up and down drainages and going like this, that I will have to actually stop, completely drop my pack and stuff. I'm wearing rain gear, that I will stop, drop it, and I will take my whole set over my head like this. I'm going to get the hood out of the way for right now, and I will just sit like this to stay dry, but I'm opening up everything like this for a minute so that I can completely air out and cool down for a minute while I'm staying dry, but I get that airflow to cool me down and thermal regulate. Um, and again, usually that's only on those days that are super, super hot, you know, but you southern guys, you know what I'm talking about. Being wrapped up in rain gear, um, you, you, you can get pretty warm inside of it. I don't care who makes it. I don't care what it is. And I don't care how breathable it is. It happens. So having that option to stop for a minute somewhere, spend two minutes like this and let your body air out will be a huge advantage for you. So use your rain gear for your, you know, whatever way you need it to. Um, like I said, it's 80, 88 degrees. I've been out here now. I think we've been working on this video uh, for uh, eight and a half minutes. And in eight and a half minutes, I'm not sweating yet, okay? I'm, so it's not horrible, but I'm saying there are times that that may be a concern for you. So take that into consideration with your actual rain gear. Now, some of the gear stuff we're gonna talk about, but before I back you up and show you a little farther out so I can explain this, we are gonna cover some things. Notice on the stick here, you're gonna run into a whole world. We're gonna do it in two parts, stick then stand. But with the sticks and going up and down these trees in the rain, there is a whole nether issues or a series of issues that can be a major problem for you okay this is a huge danger factor tree stand climbing is dangerous on a on a scale of one to ten in a dry day let's say or like today i i would say it's about a two okay but now on a rainy day it jumps to about an eight okay minimum of an eight it's everything is magnified dangerous wise what I mean by that is the tree itself is going to be very wet and slippery. This is a pretty deep bark pine tree, so it's not too bad. But you get into some of the poplars and the aspens and these uh, thinner bark trees, they can be sheer sheets of ice. They can be so slippery. So your thoughts of being able to grab onto that tree and hold it with your hands, like you do on a dry day where you can actually grab on, those are gone. Forget them. Those don't even happen. You're, you, you can grab the tree, but you can't hold nothing. You're going to just slip and slide everywhere on them. Even on a tree like this, you'll find yourself more digging fingers into bark, and it's still slippery. You're going to pop out. So you have to take that into consideration. Very dangerous on the tree. The other issue is the stick itself is very dangerous, where a lot of us, we will grab this stick and use it as we climb up and down. We're grabbing a hold of the stick. If I were to fall and I was holding this stick, I have enough grip that I can actually hold this stick and that stick will keep me from falling. On a rainy day, that will not happen. I promise you. On a rainy day, you cannot grab the stick here, cannot grab it by a step, you cannot grab it by anything and expect it to hold you. 
It will not do it. It's slippery. You are going to bite it. You cannot hold on to this stick wet with wet hands, and especially when your hands have also got crap on there from the trees because they're wet. Right now, when I drag my hand across here, they're dry. Okay, but if I do that same maneuver on a wet tree, it's going to be covered with all kinds of crap that's on a tree sticking to my hands. So I got water and debris on my hands, and you grab a stick, you will just slide right off. You won't have the power to hold it. So that's another issue you got to be careful of. Same with the steps. You cannot hold on to a step there either. So that becomes a concern. So you have to go slower and be very, very safe. Also, your boots are going to be cluttered up on the bottoms of your boots right now. Look at I mean, they're dry. I'm out here in the woods. On a wet day, they are going to be wet and filled with debris and dirt from the ground. They are going to be incredibly slippery. It is very easy on a rainy day to slip a step. Of all the times I have slipped a step and had to have my lineman belt save me, it was during rainy hunts. Every Well, rain or snow, okay? But inclement, wet weather type things. One of them was freezing rain. It rained while we got out there. And uh, by the time I left that night after dark, everything had froze. That was the first time I'd ever fallen off of a stick before. It was actually on b double wrong gorilla sticks back in the day. But nothing is safe. Okay, understand that nothing is safe in the rain. Everything has to be much slower and much more controlled and you rely on your safety devices and you take your time. Lime and belts mandatory. Your tether line, now in the rain is a very good time once you get around branches or take your time, but to have that on there too and tied off and then work it up the tree with you. Put your girth hitch in there and lock on, be safe and work your way right up with that and the lime and belt in the rain is a great idea. Your straps on your sticks they if this is wet and then they freeze which happens often in the fall you they may freeze up on you solid where you can't get them off you can't get any slack in the belt you can't get anything you could be in a lot of trouble so with your sticks it's very dangerous you guys that are using aiders okay i use one aider on the bottom step and i get asked all the time why i don't use aiders on all of them okay and i say i'm not comfortable on aiders higher up. It's not that I'm not comfortable in a tree, and it's not that I'm not comfortable on an aider. It's just that I've been doing this long enough and in so many conditions that I know the dangers that are there. So if you guys are doing in aiders and you're doing them, you know, everybody does aiders on perfect days. That makes sense. I get it. If you're going to do aiders on a rainy day or in inclement weather or in the winter time or in the snow with big heavy boots on, you better practice that stuff well in advance and you for sure better be being safe because they are very dangerous in those scenarios. You see people talk all the time about, you know, plant your toe right into the tree. Okay, that's a good advice. They say, take your foot, jam your toe into the tree. That's great. And that works absolutely incredible. I'll never deny it. It's exactly what you want to do. If this tree was a poplar or an aspen or something like that or a smooth bark pine, um, you know, where it's a smooth pine, that means nothing. This is a sheet of ice with water running down it. My boots are soaking wet. I'm going to do this every time. I'll put my toe there and think I'm good, and then it's going to just kick right out. Okay, you don't have the, the grip that you think you do when it's wet and you're raining. You are going to slide out constantly is going to be an issue for you, and you're just not going to have that control. So they become very dangerous. So if you're using aiders, and you're going above your top step with aiders and you're going to hunt in the rain, you better practice that a lot in a safe environment and make sure you know exactly what's going to happen and how to do it. If not, you could be asking for a world of hurt. I am not here to knock aiders. I use them myself. I love them. I'm not taking anything away from them, but it is my job as a YouTube creator and as somebody that loves what we do to do everything I can to keep you as safe as possible. If you are using aiders, and you're going to hunt in inclement weather, make sure you know what you're getting into. I cannot say it any other way. I don't care if it's a cable aider, a homemade aider, strap aiders, purchase aider. I don't care what it is. Aiders in the rain are a very dangerous thing. Just know that and, and accommodate for it. I use aiders in the rain every time. But I do only use one on my first stick. I have climbed thousands and thousands of trees to hang stands. You will never see me use one of these up there. I'm just not doing it. And again, it's personal preference. I'm not saying people that do are bad or that they're doing anything wrong, but I hunt so much in the rain that I'm not using one of these up there. It's just not going to happen. So those are your stick issues that you got to take into consideration. Um, also, you may get some stretch in some straps. Okay. Now the lone wolf ones, the beast ones that I got so far, I haven't seen any problems, but, um, 
there are some straps out there that they, uh, you know, over time, you'll notice that they'll start to slip away from the tree a little bit, okay? They start to creep just a touch. They get kind of wore out, or if you've even had them from the factory. I did a video on this last year where I showed you how I test every strap, okay? Every single one of these straps is tested. The second I buy the sticker stand that has them, I put them on a tree, I climb on them, I kind of pull on them, I make sure they're holding tight, because occasionally, one in every hundred, you'll get a strap that will actually pull away from a tree and it will creep out slowly. The cam buckle doesn't work very well, okay? And uh, if that's the case, they may hold good when they're dry and they may have worked perfect for you when you hunted dry, you know, two days ago. Now they're getting wet and they may not. They may actually be enough to slip because of the extra lubrication. You might also have climbed a tree dry and it had worked perfect and now you're up there high and you're hunting and now they're getting wet, they could actually creep on you. Okay, I was hunting with my daughter one time and she was in one stand and I was in another stand right down here below her and it started raining on us and we were sitting here. Next thing you know, I started kind of feeling the stand. I'm exaggerating the speed, but going forward like this and I, well, as soon as I felt it, what is going on? I looked back in the bracket between here and the tree, that stand was, the, the you know, the seat post was creeping away from the tree because that cam buckle was giving out on me. Okay, it was actually starting, you know, it got wet and was starting to slip and my whole stand was starting to tip. I realized it stood up, turned around, kept my feet against the platform right here, kind of bear hugged it, stepped over onto my sticks, re-snugged it up, and then I tied a big old knot in there to keep it from there. And then before I got, when I went to get down to pull the stand, I just pulled out my knife like I always carry in my pocket, and I just snipped and cut the strap into when I took it down, because I knew I'd never use it again anyway. When I got home, I replaced that strap. We always have extras. Um, so, I mean, it, like I said, it's just, it's, it's one of those things that happens. But it was because of the wet weather, that caused that to happen. Fortunately for me, that was on a stand, and I was there and I could, I was aware of it, and I was safely tethered in and everything was good, but had that happen on a stick as I was coming down, or my daughter coming down, who was on lifelines and always protected, but if she would have stepped, if that would have been a strap on a stick, she would have stepped on here, that stick could have started to pull away from the tree as that buckle started to release. Dangerous things that you need to take into consideration. Now that could happen any time, but like I said, the extra lubrication in the rain may be an issue for that. If they freeze up, that may be an issue for it. In the snow, it may be an issue. Um, there's all kinds of winter stuff that can be tough with those. So stick-wise, just be very, very careful. Okay, it's very important. Now with your stands, they're a whole different ball game. Okay, tree stands. Um, are, there's a very dangerous few options here that are going to happen with that. One is that same thing I just talked about with the cam buckle, okay? That cam buckle can slip on you, give you fits if that strap gets wet enough. Again, very rare. I would say one in a hundred at best, maybe one at 200. I, I, not, not, not as often as you think, but I've been using st uh, cam buckle type stands like this for 30 years, and I've, I've had no less than seven or eight times that a strap has slipped on me. Even buying brand new ones, and putting them on and testing them and realizing that two of them didn't work out of the 10 I bought and sending them back. Now it's been many years since I've had that happen, but it was a thing that did happen. Um, especially when Lone Wolf used to use the ones that were more like a seatbelt material rather than the kind they use now. I've had a few of them slip too back in the days. Um, but like I said, been a while, but it is something to be concerned about. But with my stand, you have those options, but the other thing you got to remember too is that when you're hanging your stand, it's a lot trickier too because you actually have, everything is soaking wet and slippery. So even just hanging it and holding it by the seat post and trying to slide it around there, it's going to slide through your hand. It's a little different. I love the B stand, how they got these holes in there. You can almost just grab right into them and lock your fingers in. But a lot of those stands, it gets slippery trying to hang it. You're leaning against the tree. The tree is wet and slippery. You're struggling to stay on your sticks that are wet and slippery. Your lineman belt is your lifeline and keeping you safe and doing everything right. But there's so many variables that hanging a stand in the rain can get tough. Okay, your eyes are filling up with water. Every time you bump a branch, water's pouring down. As you move on a tree, the whole tree's dropping more down on you, bringing down debris off the leaves with you. There's a lot happening when you're hanging a stand in the rain. Okay, it's a whole different ball game, and it's a safety nightmare that you have to be cautious of. So you want to be careful. And then the transition from the steps to the stand are a huge danger point in the rain. Huge danger point in the rain. I can't emphasize that enough. Because when you're on there, when you go to step from here to here, you have two 
movements that are very dangerous. Okay, now if this was up higher, either way, but since we're about level here, we'll call it there. But as I step from here to here, my body weight is going to transition. Uh, I don't know how, I'll show you here as I'm talking, but so we come into the aider, we're gonna get on here. So we get set, we're here. Okay, so I'm right here and I wanna step into that stand. As I go to bring my foot, look at what this transition is doing with my body weight. See all this? See this? That is a very dangerous thing because before I even hit that stand, what's happening here on the stick side is I'm pushing my foot that way as my body is trying to transfer over here, my foot wants to go that way. That's a very dangerous position for this foot to do this and slip right out, to just drop and go out. Very dangerous, so you gotta be careful of that. Then also when I'm trying to come into this stand this way, once I hit that stand, that stand's gonna be slippery it's on a slippery tree, got a lot of issues. So when I come into here, okay, that's a very dangerous thing. My foot wants to go this way and could slide out of that stand. So there's a lot happening here, okay, <coughs> that's going to be an issue for that that we got to take into consideration. That transfer. When I go back, this step right here to get to there is a very slippery again this way and a slippery again this way type of a scenario that can cause. A whole bunch of problems that can be very dangerous transfer uh, um, uh, transitions what I'm looking for sorry that's the word but that transition can be very very dangerous and very oh god it can get you in a lot of trouble so we want to make sure we're being safe with all of that kind of stuff so in the tree when it's raining it's a whole different ball game of all kinds of things you want to test them out all right I'm gonna pause it for a second we're gonna go over some other details on here then I'm gonna give you some hunting tips Okay, now I kind of got this set up where I can explain this a little bit to you, but a couple key things to remember. Now, this is not just rain related, but even more important in the rain, because usually when it's raining, we got wind going, we got things like that, the weather, you know, you got wind blowing things all over the place, and uh, there's a lot happening, and when deer are, when in the rain, deer senses of smell are very diminished because the rain and the moisture is pushing and dropping scent molecules straight to the ground. So they rely very heavily visually in the rain. So it makes it more important for this, but it is good tips for anything. But first of all, the rain wise, so I told you I take my jacket off when I'm hunting and it's when it stops raining, my jacket comes off. Often I hang it on my sticks that are down here um, or I'll hang it on my pack. But either way, when I hang it, I can only see half of it from there. So I can see this and I know it's good. What you don't see is the arm that's right here that very well when it's breezy could be just blowing like this we use very lightweight rain gear okay you could have this happening so you don't want this stuff to bust you as this is moving like this with that rain or with that wind that you're not even knowing about so if you're going to hang it on or you're going to hang your rain gear take your rain gear hang it and then just tuck it behind your sticks just to lock that in so it's not moving okay just a simple tip for you that way it is not going to wiggle in the wind and give you away or get you busted especially if it's behind a tree like i said where you don't see it so that's just an important little tip. These tips are make or break. You don't do this stuff, the deer bust you, okay? Also notice we have two straps, one for the stand, one for the stick hanging here, and my backpack straps, okay? I do this automatically on mine, but it's a good idea to do it, especially in the rain. Good idea anytime. But again, that wind starts blowing this stuff around. Deer are visual, they, they're looking for this kind of stuff. And if you got all these hanging down a tree, you know, and their, their wind is moving these around, they're gonna notice that stuff. So with your straps, we take the stick straps and I just basically wrap them around a couple of times like this and just set them in so they just kind of hide in and are locked in and so they're not moving too much. Same with my stand one. I just run it behind my stick or behind the seat post and just kind of wedge it in so that it's not gonna be moving around. I just don't want them blowing. Just takes a second to hide them like that. When it comes to the actual backpack straps, one thing I love about the Allens is they got this pad on here. These are very light. These are lighter than even a just standard nylon two inch ones. These are my favorite straps. I've talked about them before. But I take that strap and I just, when I get up there, I just feed it and slide it back this way like that. My feet are not going back there for anything, so I'm not worried about it. So I just grab them from on the stand. When I'm up on here, I can grab them and just pull them through and let them sit back there. Now those are tight and I'm not getting any wind action out of there. They just stay tucked back here like this out of the way where I can step on them even. No plastic on anything over there so it's not hurting it and no noise. 
but they are completely out of the way and are not hanging down and flapping around. This one here, I guess, could a little bit too. I haven't, just like I said, brand new to this stand here. I haven't hunted with this one yet, but I will probably have this tied one more tighter so that that is non-issue. You know, on these when I get everything adjusted like I want, but that lets you seal that up. Okay, so that's what you, especially in the rain, should do it all the time anyway, but in the rain, very, very important. Now, when it comes to hunting in the rain, there is the concern that you're not going to have blood trails. That's a very valid concern. You're not going to have blood trails. Okay, if it's raining hard enough, odds are you're not going to have blood trails at all to deal with. And I get people like that too that tell me when I talk about that stuff in other videos and podcasts that, oh, you're unethical because you hunt in the rain. Blood trailing is only one tool that we have in the arsenal, okay? It's a good tool, but it is not even the most effective, okay? So we have other options that are available to us. And I say this also, and I say this to every one of those people that say that kind of stuff. I pay a lot of money for my tags to go spend one week in Kansas, okay? I do the same thing for Missouri, and I go to Indiana, and I go wherever I'm going. I'm going on a hunting trip. I have limited time there to actually hunt. If you think for a second that rain is going to stop me from hunting, you bumped your head. Actually, some of the best hunting I have is in the rain. Deer seem to know, uh, just like deer know that, sorry, flies drive me nuts here, but just like deer know that after dark, there's no people in the woods and it's safe. Um, just, you know, that kind of thing. And they know that it's only daylight that's dangerous. They know that midday is usually less dangerous because there's nobody in the woods after or during midday. They, they, they catch on to all of this stuff. Don't think for a second the deer don't know that it's safe to go wherever they want in the woods and do whatever they want in the rain because very few people hunt in it. They know that. I've seen it time and time again. So um, so hunting in the rain is a gold mine. Okay, I'll never not hunt in the rain. But on these out-of-state trips, I don't care if it's a torrential downpour for three state straight days. I'm going to be in the woods. It's not option, non-negotiable. I have buddies that will sit in camp and stay there and play cards all day and say the weather's no good. I'm not that guy. I am hunting in every single weather condition there is, non-stop, it's not an option, it's going to happen because I'm there to hunt and I only have so many days to do it and I can't kill a deer while I'm sitting in camp, it's just not going to happen. So I do hunt in all kinds of rain conditions. To do that effectively, um, you need to understand where you set up. I am not going to set up in the middle of a uh, cattail marsh or in the middle of a uh, tamarack swamp or, or in the middle of a uh, super thick five-year-old clear cut um, or in the middle of some CRP grasses. I'm not going to set up in a place like that that's going to make that so difficult. Actually, you know what? My daughter just got here. Hang on a second. I want to say hi to her real quick. Sorry about that. Daughter moved out. She's 18 years old, owns her own business, and lives on her own. And she's uh, an hour away from us for her, uh, where she started that business up. So I don't get to see her every single day. So it was nice to spend a few minutes with her there. But uh, um, like I said, I'm not going to set up in these areas that are going to be too hard to recover animals in. I don't want to do that. I want to make and set up in places that my odds of recovery and the methods I'm going to use for recovery are much easier. When I shoot an animal, um, when, I, when I shoot a, a deer, a pig, doesn't matter what it is, but when I shoot an animal, I expect, fully expect to watch that animal fall over, okay? I expect my arrow to do one of two things. Zip in and zip all the way out. That deer to stand, or we'll use deer for example, is going to zip in, zip out. Arrow stuck in the ground. That deer is going to take two good hops. It's going to stand there. He's going to look around for a minute, try and figure it out. He's going to trot for another few steps, stop and look, and then he's going to fall over dead right there. In sight, nine times out of ten. The other scenario that I'm hoping for, if that doesn't work, is that he's quartering away. He comes in from behind my tree. I'm in my tree. He's going to walk by. Not going to see me. He's going to come right there. He's quartering away. I'm going to draw on. I'm going to shoot. Boom. That arrow is going to come in right through the right behind his shoulder here. And it's going to smash into this off shoulder on this side, break this shoulder. That leg is going to go limp. He is going to snow plow into the ground, ram his face in there, and push with his back legs like a bulldozer. And he is going to make it about 60 yards, and he'll be laying there dead. But I'll have a path this big of debris, leaves tore up, and a huge, it looks like a bulldozer went through there right to where he is and blood everywhere. Okay, that's what I'm after. Those are the two scenarios that I expect to happen when I shoot an animal. Other things do happen, things do go wrong, but so what I'm getting at is even in the rain, nine out of 10 times, eight out of 10, we'll call it eight out of 10 times, I'm going to watch that deer fall over anyway, one way or the other, or if I don't watch him fall, I'm gonna have a bulldozer trail right to where he is. That's what I'm after. 
And uh, if that's not the case, I have grid searching, okay? Grid searching is very powerful. If I'm going to grid search, and I'm gonna have to hunt knowing that that could be a possibility, I want to hunt on rainy days in areas that I can see for greater distances. Now, I don't care if the cover is this tall, which actually I prefer, okay? But I don't wanna be in, like I said, cattails that are this high, you know? I wanna be able, from up in my tree, to be able to see 100 yards. I don't need to shoot 100 yards, obviously, but I wanna be able to see 100 yards where I could see a deer moving and knocking brush and doing things for at least a hundred yard distance. If I can get that, then I'm okay hunting there in the middle of the pouring rain. I don't care because his odds of making it that hundred yards are very slim. If he does, and I've made a bad shot, say I gut shot it, my odds of being able to track him for such a, for a hundred yards and figure out where he is, even if I lose him then, but then to pinpoint that exact spot, which a good tip for you now, just so you know, so you watch a deer go and he goes through the woods and you're there and you got to mark a spot. Mark that spot in your head mentally where you last seen him. Immediately, while still looking at it, pull your phone out and then you got, most phones have it where you can shake them or you can tap the side button and get the camera, but pick that spot, turn your camera on your phone, put it right in and take a picture of it. Then zoom in to that tree down low, so you have something closer to the ground that you can see and take a picture again. That way when you get down and walk over there, you can look at your phone, yep, this is the tree I was talking about. That's exactly where he is. So having your phone on you to do that is a gold mine thing. Some natural uh, terrain feature or something there, a knot on a tree that is going to let you know you're exactly where that deer stood last is a good thing. And a camera, your picture taking that is a fantastic way to do it. So, but if I have that luxury of that 100 yard zone, it really improves my odds. If I was sitting in something that's gonna be, like I said, cattails or in a tamarack swamp or, or even in tight pines where I'm gonna lose them or in a clear cut, where uh, when I say clear cut, I mean where it's jammed full of poplars and stuff like that too and you can't see through it. Um, that's what a clear cut is. Uh, it's just a few years, you know, you get into five, 10 year old clear cuts, they're super thick. Well, when that deer moves through there, I'm gonna lose him in 10 or 15 yards. I don't wanna hunt a place like that in the rain, okay? In the rain, you want a place that's gonna give you some visibility as that backup plan for it. But there's nothing wrong with hunting in the rain. There's nothing unethical about hunting in the rain, especially when you put all these things in your favor to do it. And some of your best hunting can actually happen when you're in the rain. But when you do it, Make sure you take these safety precautions into play here. Make sure you take these tips I'm giving you into play. Hunting in the rain is a whole nother level. Like I said, uh, you know, the difficulty factor of all your gear and everything on a normal day is a one or two out of 10. Whereas on a rainy day, that will jump it to an eight out of 10. It's a whole different ball game. If you're not gonna practice it, which most of you guys will not, I don't care how, what you tell me you're gonna. Um, it's like the guys that tell me they kill deer three miles in, and then I tell them, I say, well, hell, how'd you get it out? Well, we drug it. No, you didn't. Stop it, you're lying, okay? So these people that are gonna tell me that they are going to go out and practice this in the rain, most of you will not. Um, so just understand this stuff. But if you are the one that does practice in the rain, you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. You're gonna know exactly what I mean. Or once you start hunting in the rain, it's well, all, all of these things will become very relevant to you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I covered it good enough for you. Just stay safe, be cautious out there, and take these things into consideration. Thanks for watching.